You're listening to The Adventuring Party, discussing tabletop and related gaming, and the Irish gaming scene, so you don't have to. Welcome to the party. I'm Shane. I'm Gavin. I'm Tara. And I'm Owen. And uh, we're here to celebrate Christmas. It's Christmas time, and we've got a festive dog in the background. Oh, yeah. Uh, Don't know your dog's uh, name. Bailey, uh, you might hear him scratching, but hopefully uh, not Bailey, it's just some other time of Christmas. Mm-hmm. After the wrestler or the drink? Uh, he picked his own name, oh, strange enough. That's a story for another day, probably. <laughs> is, is it a festive scratching? Uh, I believe that Christmas all scratching is festive, especially, yeah. especially pork scratchings. Mm. Mm. Oh, they can be good. Okay, so we are back once again for our traditional Christmas uh, uh, play dice and give each other things. Game. Despite efforts to disregard tradition, I was here to steer the course backwards towards the dice game. Mm-hmm. Uh, champion of uh, of our cultural values. Oh. Absolutely not of the dice game, though. Oof, no, I, I, I am not. I am, I am not one of those players that excels by rolling dice well. It it, it it takes a dedication to tradition to uphold one that severely disadvantages you. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I don't. I don't even remember the origins of this. It's just I, I, when I came in one year, I had to explain to me that okay, this is how we do things. Like, well, fair enough. If it's a stu- it was a stupid idea in the past. It could be a stupid idea in the present too. <laughs> Since time immemorial. Chesterton. Fence states that I shouldn't get rid of something unless I can go with the reason why it's up there in the first place. All right, this is the dice game, everybody. We each have a single poly, unique polyhedral: a d4, a d6, a d8, a d10, a d12, and a d20. We are all going to roll them. Every round in which you roll at least one, uh, one on a dice scores that dice and removes it from your roll, and you may roll again. If you roll no no ones, you are out of the round. And the winner, uh, the one who is left at the end, gets to choose from the gigantic pile of gifts. Uh, the person with the highest score. So a d4 scores you four points, a d20 scores uh, you 20 points. Yes. This is the highest score. So we all roll, uh, and we can all roll at our own pace, just going roll, and then we just announce out when we are out. So we begin by the rolling of dice. Ooh, I have a D8. I score four, and you can keep going. You need to I got a ten. We got a twelve and a four. Right, right. and I am out with four points. Eight points. Oh, I got a one and a four as well. I, I'm out. All right, and I'm out. And out. All right. So I have four points. I have fourteen. I have sixteen. I might have done this wrong. Did <laughs> <laughs> you roll once? I yes, because I got one one. And then you score that, and then you roll it again? Roll it again, yes. No, no, no. All the other dice again. Okay, so I've scored the eight. Yep. Mm. And I roll... Uh, oh, no, no change. Excellent. All right, Gavin, at 16, you're our winner. You may choose from our wonderful pile of gifts. Mm, quite a... Either a, a purpose bit or lovingly recycled. It is, it is a wonderful and soundful pile of paper and plastic. Um... Uh, I will I will pick the first pie gift on the pile. Ooh, what could it contain? Oh, the mystery. Ooh. It's lovingly ecologically responsibly packed. Ooh. Ooh, Puppetland, a storytelling game with strings in a grim world of make believe. Awesome. By John Scott Tynes. Is that based on the RPG that was first published in the Arcane magazine? I believe so. Yeah, awesome. huh. Essentially a super duper second edition. Mm. Mm, so nice. for uh, uh, listeners who might not know, Arcane Magazine was a British publication, I believe uh, of the future public- publishing It house. was, yes. And uh, running from about, I think probably 1999, 98, 99, on to about a couple of years of a run. Yeah. Which it, was impressive for given the era, you yeah, know. Yeah, but future publishing were known for a targeting niche. Uh, Absolutely. The late great Amiga Power, PC Zone, so on. Yeah. So uh, this they had the habit of having their own RPGs that they would put in the middle, in the little pull-out section in the middle of the magazine, uh, back in the time of Staples. And uh, uh, apparently, at some point, one of the writers decided to make their own version of it. Uh, 
I have to say, just uh, cursory glancing and flicking through, the art is very singular and unique. I have to say, it's quite um, striking. And also terrifying. Mm, yes, yes. There are, there are certain people who just treat this as a, as a vampire with a Bible. <laughs> I, I, I know some people for whom I would not run this game for, for their fear of both scary things and puppets. Mm. Also probably clowns. I like the, uh, the unusual long-form A4 where it's, yeah. it's flipped to a landscape. You know, it's 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 quite a. It sort of reads as a storybook. Mm, and, yeah, and that I think that's that's sort of the um, the aesthetic they're going for. Um, the I actually I know nothing. I've never actually heard about this game before. Um, it, 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 but if it does let me create a puppet and and play as one, or or, or encourage other people to gain and get the uh, experience and the wonderful uh, art of puppetry, then I I am all for this. There is a, um, I, I'm going to say unique, but I'm probably wrong, uh, aspect of play where everything you say is what you are saying in the game. And so you may Ooh. describe your your own character's actions. So, you know, punch is walking down the road. Uh, everything you say is what you say. It's it's one of these strange warpings of, of, of some play culture that we've seen in, in previous eras. Are you your own narrator? You are. Uh, do they still have stuff where, like, some people are um, wooden puppets, some people are paper puppets, some yeah, there are shadow puppets? Different classes to uh, how your puppet is created. Yeah, classism it cannot be escaped in the world of, of, <laughs> no. of felt. <laughs> well, especially when you're getting out there, you've got to be like, no, we've got to, we, we can't go too far out. If we go too far out, everyone's lost in the weeds. So we got to anchor them with a class, mm. a robust class. Uh, we, so which one, uh, which one, multi classes with uh, bard most effectively? <laughs> Um, I'm sure the, you'll find a 5th edition conversion. Yeah, Puppet Land 5th edition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, right, right next up. Yeah. Oh. Or have you got any other startling insights? Um, I look through. If it yeah, it's, it's... Push for a rolling. Uh, and I am out. I am out. I have I got a 4. And then you, you may roll again, Shane. There is a, a prize. No, no, all the other dice. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, you, there is a prize for maxing out. Oh, okay. Um, unfortunately, no, that is the only All one right. I've won. Is the but prize the adulation of his peers? Mostly, I think Humboldt would be very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, former uh, host of the show, yeah. Former host of Humboldt. All right, Shane, you have won. You may yeah. choose. Choose wisely. Do not choose your own gift. As you choose, I just want to say, I, I am actually, I, I commented on the quality of the art, but I'm disappointed at the lack of art within the book. It, it seems to, there, there is a few striking examples, but the majority of it is, is just written pages. Was this a Kickstarter or was it just a, you know, someone came up with a cool idea and said, I'm going to reprint this? This was a Kickstarter. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, being a simple person uh, of, uh, uh, patrician tastes I wait no the other one plebeian tastes plebeian mm. tastes uh, I took the one with the biggest box there we go mm. the one that actually has a box uh, for before the, the pile is um, massive but uh, interesting quality but uh, let's let, let's see uh, oh, what uh, what uh, my greed and hubris have uh, brought ooh Ooh, okay, so this is a board, board, question mark game called Unlock Escape Adventures. And I assume this is a board game for replicating the experience of an escape room. It is indeed. Uh, Unlock is released in, effectively, there are three escape room modules in there. This is a game I played, I really enjoyed. You have three escape rooms, you do them uh, either in sequence or individually. Uh, we played them all. We enjoyed them. They've got puzzles in them. And as such, it's kind of a play it. And then you're sort of, well, we're kind of done now. We're, mm. This is a great a great one to re-gift because it was a good game. But I played it. I enjoyed it. And I was done. Yeah, that's uh, impeccable uh, Secret Santa logic. Uh, the three captivating adventures inside are The Formula. Enter the secret laboratory and recover the mysterious ser serum. Uh, Squeak and Sausage, where you are a small and rather overweight mouse who I must thwart the plans of the, the, the despicable uh, Professor No Side who looks like Krusty the Clown just took all of the substances uh, and there is the island of Dr. Gursh that, that's a G right? That's, I'm going to say it's Dr. Gursh 
uh, who is an eccentric, an eccentric antique collector billionaire. So presumably you are uh, escape group role playing as uh, some cunning thieves. Oh, well, this is uh, quite interesting. Well, or in the case of the billionaire, possibly someone unfortunate, someone with a lot of debt um, and who has made an unfortunate decision. <laughs> maybe maybe this puppet, uh, this puppet land book is having a negative effect on my outlook on other games. <laughs> no, no, I think you're exactly the right... Uh, 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 the, the right uh, set of mind for uh, billionaires. It, it's interesting watching the escape room games come out because they're very much sort of the replayability on them is not the best because it's puzzles and if you rem- like if you forget fine but if you remember it's like okay I know I saw this puzzle uh, it's a bit less interesting as a result so there are definitely ones where I'm going oh this is a good one to pass on once I played mm. I played detective the board game and I gave that away as well I was like I enjoyed this this was good fun yeah but. Um, it was a it was a great experience playing it, but I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna give this to somebody else now because it is no longer of a, a you know much value to me, which is good in one way because there's two thousand board games coming out a year at the moment, <laughs> and I buy a lot of them, and it's kind of like, well, I'd like to move some of this stuff on. Yeah, it is. I do think it is a uh, uh, very good overall that a board game manufacturers more willing to play around with uh one one use or limited use games where i think we we're having a discussion earlier about legacy board games and while you know a lot of people uh dislike the idea because it sets up this illusion of oh this game has limited use but the you in return you're gaining the ability to have unique mechanics yeah. even if you can only play it once you're you can explore an entirely new also, outside of the hobby. I mean, how many times do you honestly play yeah, every board yeah, yeah. game in your collection? You know? Like, if you got, oh my god, I'm, uh, you know, uh, how many board games do you play more than more than ten times? How many board games do you play more than three or four? How many board games, honestly, listener, have you played more than once? <laughs> and then, if we go really deep, how many board games do you have that you've never played? Are still in the shrink room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down to three of those. Yeah, I have I'm say, pretty proud of myself. That's good. That's uh, good. I have to say, on average, on average, pretty high. But that's because my copy of Ultimate Werewolf is falling apart and, mm. and requires m- multiple sellotaping. But that's often the case. It's like I've got a couple of games. I'm like, yeah, I've played this huge numbers of times. Like I played Gloomhaven. I played over 80, 90 scenarios in Gloomhaven. Wow, that's great. I've got a huge amount of gameplay at Gloomhaven. My next board game along. It's like, ooh, I mean, you got ooh, 10, 20 maybe. Yeah. Like there's a couple that I'm like, yeah, I played a huge amount, and then there's other ones like, eh, not nearly as much. Speaking of which, they've announced the Gloomhaven uh, kind of introductory pack, effectively, mm-hmm. and also Gloomhaven sequel, Frosthaven. Ooh, which is going to be Gloomhaven, but with ice. <laughs> and that is a, 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 a noticing a, a trend. I've noticed that trend in sequels. Um, for example, in to venture in the world of of, of the the video, the the new darkest dungeon is ice darkest dungeon. It, it's a common a common theme of like how how do we change around this dark world? I know we make it colder. The slippy <laughs> slidey ice level has been a long video gaming tradition. Yeah, almost as hated as the sewer level. Yeah, no, it's substantially worse than the sewer level. Sewer level is you know annoying. A slippy slidey ice level was you know often controller in the monitor, you know, or joystick in the monitor if you really want to go back. Uh, on our on our gift, is this? Do you think more targeted or marketed towards gamers or just regular escape room uh, enthusiasts? Uh, I think it's a one of those split products where they were kind of going for going for both to a certain extent. Uh, it was interesting in the states they were sold as individual modules. Each one of those was a mm. single pack of cards in a small cardboard uh, package. Uh, I think they probably did that that way in Germany as well. Who often have hey, can we produce this game with less bells and whistles and just sell it in the shop? Mm-hmm. And they often do it like that. So like, let's cut down the components. Let's get the components down to almost nothing if we possibly can. There's the game. It's at a 5 to 10 euro price point and we'll just sell tons of copies yeah. because that's the way the market is there. Whereas, you know, European, they might see, oh, we, we kind of sell them as boutique, kind of a little more expensive products, but not a lot more expensive. Future yeah. adventure type body topic and how to sell your board game. Yeah, a little bit mm. of that. Because you got to, there's only so many hundred euro board games a person is going to buy in a year, or at least that seriously, you know, confronting, you know, the, the reality that they face. Oh my God, how many of these hundred, hundred euro board games have I purchased? How many have I backed on Kickstarter? Uh, oh I, God. I have a friend of mine who purchased, uh, who, who found a complete copy of Battlestar Galactica, the board game, in a charity shop for a fiver. Mm. And I still haven't forgiven him. <laughs> <laughs> that is unforgivable mm-hmm. in fairness yeah 
So, uh, I believe it's between Dan yep. and Owen for the last few... As I listen to the whispers that this is my mind. <laughs> All right, we go again. <laughs> there must be a winner. And I'm out with a 10. And I'm still in with 10. Uh, I have 10 and 2 dice. You have 10 and 1 dice, so you win. Wow, the, the rules of the dice game are Absolutely. arcane and... Uh, Section 2.11 of the uh, rule set must have covered that. Um, I think I'll follow tradition and take the top one in the pile. Ah, tradition. I, I believe that's a tradition now. Uh, lovingly wrapped. I'm even. Ooh, it's in a, in, in a carefully recycled piece of uh, equipment. Again, very ecologically responsible. Mm. I shall be using this again. And. Oh, it's a, a tin of thing. Uh, something that does not look like a like a game. Shortbread uh, biscuits. Or will they be? Ah, the old them? bribe the GM with food. Okay, boy. I mean this is uh, carefully wrapped, so maybe there's a game inside here. Mm. But uh, is it shortbread biscuits, or is it a marvelous grandmother's tin of adventure? I, I didn't know they could fit an entire Twilight Imperium in, in this such is a certainly, small box. This is certainly how I used to. Um, store miniatures back before I discovered the evils of Games Workshop miniature cases. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm actually biscuits! Actually biscuits. Well, um, uh, I believe this gift was put into the pile by uh, Mick Savage Fitzpatrick, fellow party, adventure party host, and he recommends coffee with them. Very good. Wait, Mick contributed a present though coming here. Yeah, he just he just kind of threw it in the equipment bag. So I guess we're all going to be after I go, we're all going to be rolling for an extra present. Mm. I mean, he he knows that the way to any person's heart is through his stomach, because you know you avoid the ribcage. That that Absolutely. is that is a, a single use gift, a single you know. No, one. it's not because there's one, the, two, three, four, five. Six. I mean, there's but also there's a tin left. There is a tin. There's, there's a tin left. And if you're a you know a serious board gamer or war gamer or even RPG player, a good tin is always of use plus this is small enough to you know uh be a, a, a counter tidier or yeah. something like this or gliders in there is that a is that a colossal or a gigantic creature uh, on a, on a, on a standard oh that would be that would be larger than gargantuan okay i mean it's a little bit too small to be um a scary template but yeah. uh, in a in a six mil game it would be a scary template yeah. but i mean you could get yourself a couple of dividers in there Buddy, you got a counter holder going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll against myself. Mm. Okay. Let's see what I get. I score a six and a four. Ooh. Rolling against myself. I'll bring my full potential out. And that scores me ten. So I'm going to choose which bag will I pick? Which bag will I pick? Which bag will I pick? I'm going to grab this one here. Ooh, it's Big Bang Comics flip free plug. Sealed up nicely. Again, I'm really impressed by this irresponsible ecological position taken by the adventuring party. We've got very few single-use plastics in here. <laughs> very few. But if, if we uh, if we start using single-use plastics, we can finally, you know, LARP those post-apocalyptic games more effectively. Ooh! I'm liking this. We've got a plethora of equipment in here. Including some stuff we mentioned, there is an ORX782 Gundam model here. Ooh. Ooh, it's all gunplay. Interesting. This is one of the ones with, this is one of the smaller ones, isn't it? Or is mm -hmm. it just simpler? I believe it is first grade. Ah, nice. So it's made from uh, a single color plastic and you get to get out the old paintbrush and uh, yeah. detail it up. Nice. Very nice. Um, I'm a big fan of the gunplay kits just because... There's much to learn from them. Much to learn. Mm -hmm. thing. I mean, how to remove the super glue from your fingers. Absolutely. Uh, well, with the first grade kits, or some of the kits, you can just snap them together. There's no glue okay, required. Nice. Just click them together and they hold there. Now they're, you know, not perfect, but thing. And we've got also a bunch of Forgotten Realms era adventures. This is a trilogy of adventures Ooh. called Marco Volo's uh, uh, Journey. And... Uh, for second level edition, a six, level six to eight will I assume, and most you can adapt it to most uh, games. Uh, it is a a trek across uh, the wilds of Faroon uh, uh, in the company of one uh, incredibly idiotic uh, rich boy. 
<laughs> Marco Polo's uh, lawyers were obviously very <laughs> belligerent in this era. I also think they were dead. Uh, and the old, clearly photo modeled, uh, you know, characters on clearly if someone is this is somebody's friends or something, is the the way the faces are. They're they're very uh, organic, kind of, and uh, nearly nearly photorealistic. Photoshop was very much alive in the eighties, and people forget yeah. that. I mean, if you if you want anyone to gain the attention of undead lawyers, surely it's your your friends at home. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I can definitely make use of some some of this stuff. That's looking really cool. Now I'm I'm considering how you can make use of both of them at the same time. You find a a lost mech. You find a mech. You know, you go, what's this strange thing? Like, it's like, as someone said, fun, uh, a fun a bunch of D&D characters will have when they realize the odd-shaped metal club they've been carrying around is an (laughs) AK-47. Yeah, excellent. Mage Assassin Felabar Blacklance. There's a bad guy name and a half. Excellent. King Arzun's Purple Dragons. Oh, there you go. Excellent. It's the second. It's the Marco Volo Trilogy, the third, and the first volume. Excellent. Is that from yourself, Shane? Uh, yes, I sort of managed to uh, stumble into them uh, by various means. I've been sort of on the lookout for older adventures of this type, uh, but I got a big pile of them and. I I generally am not a huge fan of Forgotten Realms. I'm more of a Greyhawk person. So I figured, well, I could certainly use something like this because it is the kind of Forgotten Realms adventure I like where it's get out of the Sword Coast and do other things. Uh, I, I feel like other people may appreciate it more. This is nothing to do with the cease and desist letter uh, filed by a white. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Knights of inescapable, ju- inescapable Justice. <laughs> That's kind of setting up who they are. Yeah. Bunch of paladins. CV is in the name. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mm. I have to say, I was, I was flicking through this Puppet Land, and it, it is a Kickstarter book. You can tell by the litany of names at the end of it. Mm. Uh, how do people feel about that trend in, in, in modern books to have, you know, a, a bunch of uh, individuals with regular and highly irregular names um, plastered at the back of them? Look, it's two pages of content that uh, people helped contribute and pay for. Uh, it is the least intrusive of the... Uh, stre- whatever stretch goals or whatever you like to you know finance uh, the printing of these books uh, it's fine maybe in future eras people will read through them I, ass- I assume the backers might open the book look for their name nod once and move on with their lives <laughs> maybe there's some per- crazy person out there who's willing to put a secret message across 20 different back kickstarters and you have to collect them all to get it Maybe this is, do that. This is the adventure tale for yeah. the next generation. Yeah, uh, I, I certainly have no problem with a few pages of the back of the book. It is actually nice to see sometimes because it reminds you that real people wanted this thing that you've uh, wasted your money on. Um, well, real people or, uh, hold on, I mean, uh, uh, Pookie. Look, Pookie's fine. Mm. Yeah, shout out to uh, Pookie. Shout, shout out to Pookie. Uh, is that Garfield's uh, teddy bear? Mm-hmm. Probably. But yes, uh, it appears we have one remaining. One one, which we must dice mm. off for. Ah, I now have a, a, a surface switch to roll. Ooh, I'm my out. goodness. I'm out. I have decided I've to score a four high. four and I'm out. As I have scored a d4, a d6, a d12, and d20. Okay, okay. then. Ooh. On the way to the, the perfect score. record. Going for the high score. No. But still, pretty impressive. Hmm. It wow. might even be the high score. Has it ever been done? Yes, I believe it has. Uh, as I said, it goes. Uh, Humbug is the keeper of the role of victory, and he will uh, inform us uh, <laughs> by contacting us through uh, Messenger Raven. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, ten years of uh, all the shenanigans will bring all kinds of dice stories to the table. But uh, yes, my, my score is forty-two. Does this render me victorious? It does. Certainly, to the right type of. Uh, um, Damn, I've forgotten his name. Life, the universe, and everything kind of problem? Yeah. What's not Monty Python, goddamn it. Um, Douglas Adams? Yes, that person. No problem at all. All right. Two in a row. Let's take a look here. Again, the spar bag. It's the hallmark of quality. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And what we got here? Ooh. You is Kobolds. A free RPG Day 2015 quick start game and adventure from uh, John Claudic. He is the um, the illustrator, but yes. it's from uh, Cubicle 9 Publishing, I believe. All right. And Kobolds ate my baby in color. 
the classic beer and pretzels role playing game, which of course I actually remember. Never played it, but I do remember it. Oh, there we go. So uh, full of very colourful, full colour printing, full of John Kovalik art, um, plenty of random tables, including a D6 table that starts at zero with a minus one penalty. Nice. There you go. That's really the cool looking. Is it entirely kind of procedurally generated RPG stuff? It's yeah. It's so it's it's a, a game around the premise of you play kobolds and you you, you desire the, the flesh of young children. It's not as as dark as again this book. It's 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 corrupting me. Uh, the book in front of me, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's 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 tongue in cheek uh, sort of. You play the the lowest of the low, the child that adventure is usually cut through, and you have to uh, work your way up to finally taking out the chicken that's been mouthing you off. Absolutely. Uh, I was going to ask a question about the the danger level of your opponents if you're all kobolds. Mm. I mean, the chicken seems to be the right way to to go for. It, it is a fairly lethal game. It, it does have a lot of death based mechanics baked in. Uh, every time you fail a check, you add one notch to your death count to uh, inching ever close to the unlucky thirteen number. There does seem to be a lot of well, not maybe not a lot, maybe a handful of games around kobolds and goblins where where character death is is baked in and uh, appears to make it quite fun. Mm. Mm. I, I do I do find it interesting that, that there's been this growing over the years resurgence of the uh, the underdog monster RPG or underdog monster experience where the uh, the chaotic evil, always chaotic evil uh, shenanigans of the average monster suddenly get turned up for comedy as opposed as opposed to horror, and they become sort of protagonists based entirely on the fact that they are unlikely to succeed. Mm. Um, it's it's you know as we as we sort of age into this industry, there's a lot of um, tropes that are, are are explored and sort of flipped on their head, and there is a sort of a, a, a unique and a textual base with which we can draw from for our our unique sort of role playing experiences. Mm. And of course, it, it doesn't it doesn't claim to be a. A uh, supplement for a ten-year-long campaign or anything. It is very much uh, based mm. around one or two sessions. There, there is there is rules for advancement, but usually it, it it hinges on the fact of you surviving particularly long to you know gather upgrades for your character. Uh, ostensibly, you you are working for the king of the kobolds uh, and all hail king, all hail king Torg, I believe. Yes, yes, that is it needed to be said. It does have a sort of a if you're familiar a paranoia esque meta game to it, in that there are a number of of rules and procedures you need to follow. And I believe that if you take damage, there are certain damages that affect you as a player, such as not being able to use your um use parts of your body or or say certain things or one which entails you having to hop around everywhere as a player until you get healed. I mean, the, or, the, or die. the glory days of, of many tables of paranoia at Gelcon uh, are flooding back into my mind when that uh, that comes up. And then I would chat, uh, walk around the room singing a glory, glory hell computer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good days. They're doing a new edition of Paranoia, as I recall. It's coming out Yes, soon. Uh, I believe the soon. computer... The computer game version has just been uh, released on the Epic Game Store, uh, to the dismay of everyone on the internet. Um, uh, but yes, I believe there is. It is being accompanied with a, a new edition in the next few months, probably when the actual release comes out on Steam. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent. I look forward to that. Cool. All right. How are we doing, Chen? Uh, we well, we have cleared the table of stuff, and yeah. uh, we have. Uh, talked about gift and gifts and gift related uh, paraphernalia for approximately 30 earth minutes absolutely do we have any final gift recommendations out there of something cool to pick up for people hmm anything occur anyone like oh you know what that'll make a good gift oof uh, I mean that's a good good idea except I'm terrible at shopping <laughs> I think uh, if you've got someone who plays a lot of RPGs a good dice bag is a nice gift because it's the kind of thing that someone often won't buy for themselves but it's still handy. I will say that one of the best gifts I've gotten over the last uh, year was uh, a dice tower. Yeah. Uh, mm. there, uh, every convention seems to say that we see these laser cut wooden dice towers on sale and they're actually really good yeah. uh, gifts um, or 
uh, other dice tires, just uh, like a nice box to uh, test the di- dice tay. Have you seen them? One of the modern kind of like their new like mouse mat material, but they actually have uh, little fasteners on the corners, and you can click them up to make a little six sided uh, space to roll your dice in. Oh yes. Oh yes, I believe one of my uh, one of my uh, players in my D uh, D game had one of those. It did. It is actually interesting that the fact that you just have a few fasteners and you can have, turn a flat thing into a three D uh, space. It's actually really useful for portability. Is a yeah. important thing in uh, modern gaming paraphernalia. If you want to kill two birds with one stone, all rolled up, do both dice bags oh, nice. and those dice trays. Nice. And they are, I have a couple, and they're they're quite useful. I also recommend, if you've got a, someone who's a really dedicated board gamer, buy them a bag of a thousand small sealable baggies. Mm, yes. <laughs> so they always have some stuff to stick their new board Although, be in. wary of looking like a drug You will look like a drug dealer. <laughs> that will often make them reluctant to buy them, so it's your job to go on Amazon mm. and purchase a suspiciously large amount of them. Mm. I, I'm only addicted to the cardboard crack. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just need to some more about my tokens, man. <laughs> Just need a few more tokens, man. I can quit any time I want. This new drug is hitting the streets. It's called a meeple. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, it seems that um, we don't want to keep our listeners too long, for they have a, a Christmas to attend. And uh, they would, uh, I'm sure they have their own gifts that they need to get back to uh, and or rush out to the shops to buy for uh, their loved ones. So I think uh, we will... Uh, Wrap up our presents, uh, carefully uh, recycle all of our wrapping paper and our shopping bags. And uh, and this time, Merry Christmas. This party is over. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to The Adventuring Party. You can find show notes and links to things we've mentioned at theadventuringparty.net and on our Facebook page. You can leave comments there or on Twitter through at AdventuringPTY. The hosts can be contacted by email at party at theadventuringparty.net. The Adventuring Party is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike Version 3 license.